What is the preferred way to install Office in your Intune environment? There's quite a few options actually, and the, the obvious one, right, is if you go to Windows and Create, and then find this Microsoft 365 Apps Windows 10 and later. Seems really cool. Click on that, choose Select, and here we have the name, and the name again, um, and then the publishers, Microsoft, and we have Productivity. Uh, the logo, brilliant. We can choose next. And then the configuration design is one of the ways we can do it, or the XML we can use. But I'll do configuration. And then the Office apps, no one uses Access. Please stop using Access. It's not. It's, stop using Access. Um, yeah, and then we've selected seven apps. And we can also add Project Online Desktop and Visio Plan 2. And then the default file format, we would go for the uh, Office Open XML because that's about all the features of Office, whereas the Open Document might support them now and then lose it on save. Never mind. So, yeah, use Office Open XML. Update channel, let's go with monthly enterprise channel. It depends what your organization's wanting to go with from an update cadence perspective. Remove the other versions, yep, why not? Uh, version to install is latest as opposed to a specific one. We can be more specific if you want to be. Um, also, we're not gonna use shared computer activation. We will accept the terms, etc., and go next. And then we're ready to assign it. So at this point, I can push it to all my devices. And why would you not use that? That seems pretty good, right? It's gonna always, always be installing the latest version and it's going to automatically update your existing Office installs that you've got. It sounds like a great idea. And yet, some of the recommendations you see from MVPs and from other, other best practices is to not use this and instead to use your own Win32 app. And so I wanted to understand a little bit why, more about why. So with using this built-in version, the way you can get it from this list, this is not an app that's being pushed. It's not pulling down an application to Intune, uh, to, to your device from Intune. It's telling it to go and reach out to the service in the cloud and pull down that content using the configuration that I just set. So it doesn't necessarily play perfectly well with Autopilot. If you use a Win32 application, it will install in chain, in the right order-ish, with uh, other dev other applications on that device during autopilot, which sounds like a more consistent and and um, and good thing to do, because it's possible that, and we've seen it many times, where autopilot will fail because of an issue with the Office install, which is coming from the cloud, which is not a standard application. So maybe that's why people are saying you should do that. Um, we can go to Windows App Win32 and and make it. Uh, um, a Win32 app, I'll show you how to do that actually. We can use the Office Deployment tool, for example, to do that, but we first have to start in config.office.com, if I can type it. And from here, we can create a new configuration. Let me zoom in a tiny bit. You can sign in and save your configurations if you want, but you don't need to. You can just continue without. And we can create a new configuration. So we're going to deploy Office 64-bit. Uh, and we are going to deploy Office apps for enterprise. And then we'll, we don't need to select any of these, but you can be specific if you want to include none. And in fact, it doesn't even add it. You just don't need to click it. We can then choose the current channel or monthly enterprise, like I was showing you earlier on. And again, the latest and really have that exact same set. Oh, this was not available in that. I didn't have the option between classic and new when I was doing it on the um, Intune portal, but there you go. So we can choose next and then select a language. We can match the operating system and then we can do the install and choose whether we're using the Office CDN for the main application to be pulled down from the internet or whether we can just get a local source and actually build that content onto the local disk and then wrap that in in tune with that might be a way that works as well or we can pull it from endpoint configuration manager which obviously is no longer a thing from from config manager as they should call it um, next we can choose whether we're going to be upgrading so do we want to remove the other versions before we install it if they exist um, 
then licensing activation. We, we don't need to go through all of these because we're doing normal activation. So at, at the end, I can just choose finish and then I can export that. And when you export it, you again need to choose the format. I'm going to go with this open XML, which it says if you want to set the user defaults to the file format designed to support all features of Office, then we can do that. Sounds good to me. Um, we will choose OK. And then I can accept the terms and download my configuration for my demo. Also, it says be sh before using the Office deployment tool to download or install Office, we recommend in making sure you've got the latest version. So when you click on that, it takes you to this download tool thing. You download it. There it is. I've just done it a few minutes ago. It is ready to go. All you do is double click it and extract to wherever you want it to go. And I've extracted it to here. And what you get is this sample XML. Um, no, this is not at all what I set. It hasn't included that, obviously. Um, so I will just choose export and get that downloading. There it is. And then we'll combine this XML with uh, my Office app, which is this one here. Let me just do that, actually, before I forget. I'm going to grab this, copy it, and put it... Where did it go? There it is. Uh, I'll put it there, and then get rid of this, delete that. OK, so now I have a setup file with an XML. And I can use this to install the application. But first, in order to get it into Intune, I need to wrap it in an in Intune Win file. So let me do that. I'm going to go and grab um, in my apps folder, I've got this Intune Win app util. Let me just run that as admin. And then in my Office folder, I can, oops, I can grab that. So the source folder is this one here. The setup file is setup.exe. And the output folder is going to be Office. I didn't create one. I forgot to create one by um, getting overexcited about it. So Office Output, I'll call it. There it is. I'll put that here. And there you go. It created that setup.intune.win file. What we can do now is upload it to Intune. So I will go here and choose select and select the app package, grab my office output folder with my Intune Win. There it is. And then I'm going to call it Micros, might as well do a capital, traditional, Microsoft Office 365 apps for enterprise which is called Microsoft Office for most people. We're going to call it Microsoft as the publisher. And the version of the app, I saw it somewhere, is 16.0.19029.20136. It rolls off the tongue, really. Just such an easy to, easy to say version number there. And then we'll choose next. We need the install command, which is going to be setup.exe slash configure, and then the XML, which I've forgotten what I called it, configuration demo. OK, put that here. Now, because the setup file and the configuration demo were in the same folder location when I zip them up, then they'll be in the same folder location when you extract them. Now, the uninstall command we're going to use is a little convoluted. Um, it took a little bit of Googling to figure this out and a lot of testing, and then I also consulted the team at Robopack. We're going to use um, this one here because this is available on the computer. So I just need to fix that a little bit. So it's the the weird thing is that it says scenario equals install and then products to remove is these ones here. We're going to have to test it because I think that's a bit weird that it says scenario equals install. But we, apparently we 
it has been tested by others and it did work. I'm not 100% convinced, but we'll see. Uh, so that's what we've got here. Now, we're going to scroll down and choose Next. And I'm not going to require any particular operating system detection rules. Um, I'm going to manually configure and we'll go with the registry. It'll be something like the HKLM, this one here. We've got display version, the uninstall key for that. And then we're going to grab the display version as the value name. And then it's going to be version greater than or equal to and we'll just grab the actual version of this application here so that's that oh quite a lot of work isn't it um to do this we'll choose okay and that's detection now done dependencies maybe not supersedings you might want to supersede a previous version of office you've built this for um we'll choose next and now we're at the stage we can assign it that seems like a lot of work and Office gets updated quite a lot and if you don't want users to have to kind of install an old version in autopilot and then get a new version when a new when you know when when the device figures out that it's running an old version of Office then you'd have to be pushing that new version of Office via this method doing all these steps with all that possibility of typos um, every time it gets released. It seems like a lot of effort for the risk of um, of, of not having an autopilot failure. I think I would prefer to use this method here, this, this built-in one which pulls it from the cloud every time and seems to work. I mean, the alternative is obviously something like Robopack, which we're building these already for you without you having to request them. So, I mean, if we go to uh, instant apps and type Microsoft Office. There it is, Microsoft Office Apps for Enterprise, updated a couple of weeks ago. Let's see if it's the same version. Yeah, 20136. And I can either analyze and build this and get the thing that I've just um, got manually. You know, I've done all that stuff, and um, there it is. I can now import that directly into Intune now. Um, using PSEDT as well even. So I could do that and that's now uploading into Intune and I'll take a look at that in a second. And then also we could set up a flow for it so that we don't need to do that ever again. <laughs> we can just let it continuously create the new version of the Win32 app and push it up to Intune for us using the wave approach that we've got. We have this patch group um, where it can go to my IT pilot computers, then my pilot users and then um, not seven zip, but go to my go to my users who need it. Um, let's see if it's put that in tune for me, because I already had that one that I put in there. Let's see if it's put one in there for me. Uh, there you go. I think it's this one here. Nope, it's not. It's this one here because this is a Windows app Win32. Whereas that is not. <laughs> uh, I'll choose that and properties it's going to be using yeah um, PS ADT but generally it's done it's built it um, looks like it's using the same detection method and stuff so yeah that was much quicker to do than having to build the engine win but you know roller pack always is quicker when you're doing that but I think this is the only way I would want to do the Win32 version compared to the built-in Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise. If if it was this quick to deploy it via Win32, I'd be happy. But if it's not this quick, then I'm probably just going to stick with the standard uh, Microsoft 365 apps for enterprise uh, configuration service provider method in Intune. Let me know what you think in the comments. Which do you prefer? Is there a reason you go with the Win32 version, or do you use something different that I haven't mentioned? I'm really open to hear your thoughts on this. Let me know. I'll see you next time.